Welcome back to the channel guys and Merry Christmas to everyone. It is Christmas Day. Uh, I am finally filming the video that has been long awaited. We are going to go over the masturbating techniques that I know uh, and some gauntlet tips and tricks that I can share to help everyone uh, increase their progress in the gauntlet. I know that there's a lot of people who are not particularly happy with the updates to the gauntlet. I myself love it, um, so I want to be able to basically share some of the information that I know uh, that can make you maybe hate it a little less. Uh, you might not still love it, but you'll hate it less than you hated it before watching this video because you'll know a bunch of things that are going to help you make more stardust than you're currently making. Uh, before I jump into the video though, uh, considering that it's Christmas time, there are some pretty crazy deals going on. You can buy Mythics in the shop. I don't recommend any of the Mythics um, considering that a Megatont monster is here for the frat event and is here for a breed event that uses the last two pass monsters. Um, but they are selling monsters. Uh, if you don't have uh, you know, a Lindworm. A Lindworm is definitely worth buying. Um, if you don't have a Bombetta, maybe you have a Shelly and you have the new Cryo uh, Megaton, but you don't have Bombetta, you might want to consider getting a Bombetta just so that you have an additional um, Megaton to use in the Gauntlet because every single Megaton SC or trait, or if they come in the future, but every single Megaton that you have can be the equivalent of 30 Stardust a day minimum. Some would be more than 30 Stardust a day, but the bare minimum, you should be able to convert all of your Megatons to 30 Stardust a day, which means if you're not even good at the gauntlet, but you have three Megatons, then to me there's no excuse why you're not making at least 90 Stardust a day in the gauntlet if you own three Megatons. The logic behind that is because the gauntlet is all about speed now, guys. Uh, it was basically all about speed before they updated it, updated it but it, it really wasn't. Like, if if you got hit, you were, you know, pretty much in trouble in the old gauntlet just as much as you are in the new gauntlet. Uh, it just starts sooner, meaning sooner you... Sooner now you can't take hits than last gauntlet, meaning like on the last gauntlet my Bombetta could take hits to like uh, 52. Currently I am on, um, I think I'm on node 47 in this gauntlet, uh, and I do not have my Rune Guardian on at all, uh, and I'm at a point where I don't think my Bombetta can take this hit, uh, and the reason why I don't think my Bombetta could take this hit is because he may be able to take just this first Denier's hit, but the problem with this first Denier is he's 28k speed, and the second, the Megaton, is 27.9k speed. I can only get my Lindworm with no Rune Guardian to 28.4, and that is with all all 10s, and that is with or him wearing 1-9, but everyone else wearing 10 team speeds, and that's with everyone wearing team speeds and not wearing any strength or anything, and that's with 150s. So if I can do that with 150s, I'm pretty sure most of the people watching this video, if you're here for the information I'm going to give you in this video, you can't outspeed either of these. You'll be lucky. I'm pretty sure you're probably able to outspeed this guy, but you can't outspeed either of these. All right, well, if you can't outspeed either of those, and they both take a turn and they hit your Megaton, your Megaton's going down this node, in my opinion. Uh, maybe a 150 can take both hits. I am still undereducated enough in this gauntlet to know exactly how much damage all of the monsters do on each node. But if I had to guess, I would guess the AoE is about 300k total. Uh, maybe about, you know, 100k each times 3. You're looking at 300k, 350 each monster times 2 monsters. We're looking at your tank probably needs 700 to a million HP to survive that node, if I had to guess. Or it would become one of those things like I just told you, which is where you're converting one of your Megatons to a 30 Stardust income right there. Meaning you go in, your Megaton takes the first hit, then the second guy goes, he kills your Megaton, then you go and you kill them, and, and you're out your Megaton, but you're up 30 Dust. Alright, so, 
why this video is going to be so important is because uh, a lot of people used to own Shelly's. Uh, they still own the Shelly's, but they used to be able to, instead of baiting, use what I like to call reusable bait, which is bait that uh, you can bait with it and then you can bait again with it. You're not out the monster. So the first thing I want to do, I guess, is we'll go over what types of bait there are. All right, so in my monsters, we can look at all of the potential monsters. You can see their relics, you can see their runes. Uh, we're gonna go over what is a throwaway bait. All right, well, a throwaway bait to me is a monster that you're sending in solely to die, okay? Meaning the monster's gonna go in and it's just gonna die. It has absolutely no other um, importance other than getting killed. And why would you send a monster in just to get killed? Uh, it's because it takes the enemy, 99% of the time, it takes the enemy some stamina to kill your guy. Um, now, you may even be throwawaying a guy that has runes on him, but what also makes a throwaway monster a really obvious throwaway monster is it can't wear any stamina draining relics or you don't own any of the stamina drawing relics stamina draining relics it can wear or the monster doesn't have runes or the monster is not leveled up those are all great reasons to categorize one of your monsters as a throwaway monster so like if i'm going to scroll down here uh, we'll start at the bottom of, uh, it's good. I wish there was a way you could separate the cosmics from the mythics, but you can't. So we're just going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to show you, uh, that I myself don't even have all of my monsters leveled up or ranked or, you know, what have you. So if I was going to do the gauntlet, uh, we're looking at, you know, Targon is definitely a throwaway monster. He's at, you know, level four. He's not doing anything but dying, uh, it doesn't even matter if you did put bait relics on him. But to sidestep out from the throwaways, there are uh, there are trick throwaways. Like Targon, if you rank him to three, has the potential to be a trick throwaway, meaning he has damage mirror SC 50%, and he, as being so low, will take extra damage because of the level gap difference, meaning the higher level a monster is to you it gets a damage boost versus you <laughs> or the higher you are towards it you reduce the damage boost should that is a probably a better way to put it but if you have damage mirror and you get single targeted even if you die the damage will be reflected the mirror will trigger uh he's not the only monster a slugazoid does the same thing but again these are kind of situational monsters because a you have to be single targeted for the damage mirror to work it will not work if you're aoe uh, and in the old gauntlet it was we were all familiarized with how to get a monster to aoe how to get a monster to single target for the most part you could send in three monsters the monster's most likely going to do an aoe uh then you could send in one monster the monster's most likely going to do just a single if you send in one that's not the case anymore in this gauntlet guys i have numerously sent in one monster and been aoe'd with that one monster Okay, I have numerously sent in three monsters trying to bait a node and been single hit on one of my monsters. Okay, so I highly think that it is way more random with this new gauntlet on whether or not the enemy is going to single target or they're going to AoE target. I used to call that in the old gauntlet the gay node, the gay guy. The gay guy you couldn't uh, gal Galdeo or however you say his name officially, I call him the gay guy. And that was why I called him the gay guy. I called him the gay guy because he could single target, he could AOE target, he could zero damage. He could just mess up any bait plan that you really had. There was no, like, 100% guaranteed way to bait him. You just had to keep trying. So anyway, I, that would be a throwaway for me. Uh, the quest monster here, uh, Zio, whatever, Akro, I can't say her name, okay? Just the most recent quest monster. This monster is currently a throwaway, but... I don't consider any monster that has a Uriel Essence slot a basic slow throwaway anymore. And the reason for that is in this gauntlet, there is way more times where you're going to have to bait more than one monster on a node if you want to have an easy shot at that node. The easiest way to make this gauntlet easier for you is to make sure that every single monster that is faster than you has no stamina when you start your fight. Unless you're one of those people who has a Shelly. If you have one of those Shellys, then you want to make sure that at least 
only one monster on the node is faster than you. Why? So that way that one monster can kill your Shelly and then you can kill them. Okay, if you have Uriel Essence team, meaning you used to beat the old gauntlet using a Uriel Essence team. When I say Uriel Essence team, I mean three Uriel Essence monsters on the same team. Normally, all of them have to board a trait disable first, Linworm second to baby, and then the third option is all different kinds of things. Black Feathers, Letalist, this quest monster, whatever. Um, a low-level Necro uh, with his Shizar, Ami, all kinds of things can be used in that place. But... Assuming you have a Uriel Essence team, you are in the same boat as a Shelly. You want to make sure that no more than one monster on the whole entire node is faster than you. Why? That way the monster that's faster than you can kill your Uriel team, or maybe not kill your Uriel team, but he can go, and the worst thing that can happen is he kills your Uriel team, and then you are faster than all the other monsters on the node, and you get to take your turn. Because if two of them are faster than you, like the node I just showed you in the gauntlet, and you try to go in there with the Uriel team, and the first monster kills your team, and then the second one goes in and he kills you again, you're done that's the end end of the road for you without spending gems all right so firestar is a perfect example of a throwaway guys i don't have them leveled up uh he's got great relics for this gauntlet uh i'm gonna tell you a secret early um the new meta of baiting if you want to call yourself a master baiter if you want to feel like a master baiter then the number one rule you're going to learn about this new gauntlet is that trap monsters are the best bait monsters in the game now uh before they were not that great like sure rotten was always the best uh bait monster in the game but you were never really trying to bait a whole node unless it was like you were either super super low and trying to go farther than you really belong or it was like the hardest day ever and there's only like two nodes that you're slower than and you're only slower than them because you have 130s and not 150s whereas if you had 150s there were no nodes that you were slower than None. The hardest node would be a Froma node with a 26k Muchi, and you could have your Uriel team both have Tabora and Linworm be faster than Muchi. So, like, there were no no, and that's with the Rune Guardian, though, but there were no nodes, really, uh, where traps were super, super demanded. Now there are. Now there's tons of nodes. Now there's nodes where everybody's over 35,000 speed on the node. Okay, well, what if you've only got 130s? How are you trying to beat a 35k speed node where everybody's got 35k speed and your monster's only got 20k speed? Easily, trap monsters. You just send in two trap monsters. You send in two trap monsters and a throwaway. They go, they smack you with an AoE. You make sure that your trap monsters are invested in because your best bait monsters in the game are the ones that you want your life runes on, okay? The best bait monsters in the game are the ones that you, you rank two plus because of book rewards, okay? They get hit, they get drained, the whole node is empty, you come back in with your main team, and you clear them out. Okay, so moving on from throwaways and already letting you know that trap monsters are the best bait monsters in the game, that brings me to the third type of bait monster, okay? This is called a single bait monster and that means its job is to bait a single monster where that is going to matter is say like okay what did i tell you mathematically if you had a shelly or you had a uriel team only one monster could be faster than you on the whole entire node okay let's say two monsters at the beginning of the node are faster than you that means if you're planning to use Shelly or if you're planning to use a Yuri Lessons team, you only need to bait one of those two monsters. That is when you would use single baits. Now why I'm taking all of this time to go over baits for you and the difference between them is because one of the biggest pitfall traps that you're going to find yourself in is using your better bait monsters earlier. Okay, meaning you want to use your least valuable bait resources as early as possible, meaning like me, I just showed you a gauntlet node 47 where I'm planning to do some sort of bait method there. Okay, well, considering that it's the first node of the whole entire gauntlet that I've had to bait, I don't just want to come in and use my best bait monsters. I don't just want to come in and use trap monsters if trap monsters are the best bait monsters in the game. I don't want to just come in and use throwaways if throwaways can be used on node 1 or node 56. I want to use the worst bait monster possible, which is a single bait monster. What it takes to be a single bait monster is either 
one relic that can drain over the max stamina or two relic slots combined that can drain over the max stamina. So while looking at my monsters here, let's look at the Rhino. The Rhino has the potential to wear two cheap relics that can drain a whole monster or it has the ability to just wear one highly leveled up relic that could drain a monster, meaning you could wear a Wang Shield Max, drain 300, you could wear a Thetis Armor Max, drain 300, or you could wear a level 20 Thetis Armor and a level 20 Wangs combined and drain for Max. Same difference. And that is how you're going to tell which single monsters are better than other single monsters. The cheaper, the the, the more bang for your buck you can get in the bait department is going to determine which bait monster is more valuable. So if you can only wear a staff, you can just wear a max pump seed staff. But it's more expensive to max a pump seed staff than it is to have, you know, a golden staff and then a diamond uh, mask or something. So a monster that can only wear, you know, like a staff and a sword is not going to be as valuable as a monster that can wear a staff and a shield, etc. So on, I'm sure you get the point. Alright, so Gaia there would be a single uh, bait monster, the Rhino would be a single bait monster, um, Shredder would be an amazing trap monster, Pulsa would be a, a trap monster that is an exceptionally good trap monster. The reason why he's an exceptionally good trap monster is because at rank 3 he gets damage protection, meaning he's going to be able to take hits from a single monster. Which, instead of trying to get everybody to take AoE hits, you can look at Dreamer. Dreamer is a Uriel Essence uh, monster that can also wear a trap, uh, so you can make two choices. Is it going to be a Uriel throwaway, or is it going to be a trap monster for you? It's going to determine whether how high ranked you got it, how much uh, life runes you got on it. The key deciding factor on valuing your baits uh, is how much damage can they take before they die. Alright, so moving on from a single bait monster, which is, you know, I used to use Manny, I used to use Aatrox, those, Seaquake, those are all the single bait monsters that I used to love and enjoy in the previous gauntlet. I still try to use them in this gauntlet, they just get used super early because they're not very invested in. They wear 6s and 7s and they're rank 120. Well, I'm telling you right now that 120s and 6s and 7s work to like node 52. After 52, they're hitting too hard. You're getting hit with AoEs that do 360,000 damage, or you're getting hit with singles that do almost a million damage it's not going to work anymore all right then when you look at a, uh, a monster like the one i got named meth head here he cannot wear any stamina draining relics he can wear two stores okay it does not matter how much life runes you got on him or what rank he's got he is a throwaway monster he's going in to die and no other purpose okay Henrich is one of the best trap monsters in the game. Why? Because if trap monsters are the best in the game then what does that make a monster that can wear two traps? It makes them the most OP bait in the game. Meaning, if you're wondering what is the best bait monster in the game, according to me, it is Rotten. The second best bait monster I know is Henrich. Okay? The third best bait monster I know is probably Pulsa. And that is because you can wear damage reduct or damage uh protection buff while wearing a trap, which is going to allow you to do an incredible amount of stuff. Alright, now. That brings me to reusable bait. A reusable bait is something like a Bombetta wearing life runes and taking the first hit because let's say only one monster on the node is faster than you, you send in bomb, it hits bomb, bomb lives, you go, you, you then beat them and you move on to the next note. You can change his runes from life runes to anything but life runes to reduce his max HP down to less than whatever HP you had left. If you let your HP go lower, then you can possibly reduce his HP. Then you will not be able to quote unquote rune, rune trick heal him. But... Like, my bomb has 150k base life. He's up to 630k life with the runes, and he gets 100 plus k from the armor. So he can take 500k damage almost before he is out of the window of being able to be rune healed. Okay, so any node where I'm getting hit for less than 500k, he is reusable bait. I let him get hit, then I switch his runes, then I switch them back, and we enter the node, and everything is good. All right. The next thing that I want to explain to you is that all the monsters that are throwaways, there are throwaways that are now key 
throwaway monsters that I meant I briefly went over earlier and I called them trick monsters uh, and I went I told you Targon could be a trick monster because of damage mirror I told you that uh that slug could be a trick monster because of damage mirror okay well any monster that has taunt can also be a trick monster the reason for that is there are some super OP monsters late in the gauntlet that don't have any AOE moves. Now, I've only done a couple gauntlet playthroughs so far, but in my experience, two main monsters that I went against that had over 35,000 speed and were on nodes with two other monsters that had over 35,000 speed was Targon and Axelmech, and neither one of those two monsters has AoEs. So where that becomes relevant is instead of using your best monsters in the game to bait, which are your trap monsters, you can use throwaways, bait two of the monsters with throwaways, and then send in your main team with a taunt monster wearing team speed runes, and they'll kill the taunt monster, and you'll take your turn and beat them. All right, so that covers the bait monsters, all right? Now that I've covered the bait monsters, I want to talk about uh, what people are using to, I call it, uh, I basically categorize the monsters in bait monsters and then clear monsters. And what a clear monster is, is a monster that you're using to defeat the node. Like after you've drained all their stamina, what's your win condition? How are you going to beat them? A lot of people like to use, you know, the Kodama with uh, Tabora. A lot of people like to use the Tabora with Lindworm. A lot of people still like to use their triple Uriel team, even if they're not getting hit. Um, a lot of people like to use Vipaparu. Uh, a lot of people don't even own Tabora, so they use Vampira Vipaparu, and they wear a niche sword, okay? Me, I think that Steamwrath, is the best way to defeat the gauntlet there is. It was so broken in the old gauntlet that the old gauntlet was was done for, in my opinion, meaning it was getting face rolled. And as soon as it was getting face rolled, they were like, hey guys, it's time to update the gauntlet. All right, well, just because they updated it doesn't mean Steam isn't useful. And I know there's a million people that are going to, every time you tell them, hey guys, Steam Wrath is the best way to be defeating the gauntlet, they're going to say, well, I don't have Ferris. Okay, if you don't have Ferris, your Steam Wrath is not the best way to beat the Gauntlet, but it's still a great way. Now, where does it really shine? When you did not trap bait the whole entire node. If I trap bait the whole entire node, that means they have no stamina. If I don't have a Ferris and they don't have any stamina, I got 20 attacks unless you're wearing mutant runes to be able to punch them all three out. If they had 35k speed, I'm pretty sure they're going to have a crap ton of life and you're not going to be able to punch them out. But if they do have stamina, you can wear a max Jazzy Mask to make up for not having Ferris. Jazzy Mask will heal you up to 775 stamina a node. If you came into the node without max stamina, you get 225 with your first smack, puts you back to max, then you beat on one monster that you just took stamina from till he's dead, uh, and then you move to another monster. As soon as you smack it for the first time, you will gain 225 stamina. It will take you less than 225 stamina to kill him. And then you move to the third monster. That is how you play with no Ferris. I have done it in my streams to prove that, look, if you don't have Ferris, you can do it. But that's not going to work if you bait everybody. But if you bait everybody, hopefully you can use something like Linworm with your Steam or whatever you have to do so that while Steam is having a charge, they're all in baby or something. Okay, or you're turn transferring to her so she's got two turns in a row. You beat him to death with the first turn and then you charge with the second turn. Okay, so that's how you could use Steam Wrath. But that is my honest to God best advice is that if you have Steam Wrath, rank her to five. I don't care if you got her 120, rank her to five. Now you may say that seems like overkill. It is overkill if you're turn transferring to her, okay? But there's gonna come nodes where you don't have room for a turn transfer. So if you can get your Steam Wrath to 29,000 speed without having to run a Linworm on your node, and you're just running like a Mega Taunt like Shelly or a Mega Taunt like the new Cryo and Ferris and Steam, okay, well your Steam can get up to 29k speed meaning you only had to bait maybe two monsters on a node because one of them was under 29k speed. Or if you baited all of the node, you will be able to wear one 
speed rune and two strength runes and that will make you at least faster than half the slowest monster on the node so that way your steam can beat the whole node to death in, in a reasonably fathomable time. Everybody talks about how slow Steam Wrath is. It's a lot slower to do anything in this game if you're not beating the gauntlet. That is a fact. You're going to get all this stardust to be able to rank if you can get farther. Okay, so I've went over the steam combo. Uh, with the steam combo, you will be changing out your third monster. When I say steam combo, I mean steam, I mean ferris, you get infinite attacks, your relics don't matter. Alright, you will pair that with a turn transfer, either Lupo, Masho, or Lindworm. They are going to become nodes where you're going to put 6 team speed on your Ferris and your Steam Wrath, and then all speed on your turn transfer, and you are just going to turn transfer to your Steam for a, steam, for, for a speed boost. Okay? Then when you're not using turn transfer, there's going to be Mega Taunt, meaning you may be using Shelly to just soak up one hit die, come back to life, then your Steam goes, and you, you beat them all. Or you're going to be using Bomb, Bomb eats a hit, your Steam kills them all, then you Rune Heal your Bomb, same with cryo your cryo eats a hit then your steam kills them all then you heal or you're going to be sacrificing maybe you've gotten so far in the golly you're on node 54 your bomb can't survive the hit your cryo can't survive the hit you're going to use steam uh your your megaton is going to get hit it's going to die then your steam going to go you win you turn that megaton into 30 dust you have two of those megatons you just turn it into 60 dust because now you go on to 55 and you do the same thing there um, that is how you're going to use your Steam Wrath. Then there's going to become one other uh, monster that you swap in, which is Tabora, because if you're going against Evade uh, with Taunts, or you're going against Damage Mirrors with Taunts, and you can't get it down with Purr, maybe you're going against a Targon, he's got positive effects protection, you can't get his Damage Mirror off, you're going to use Tabora. After baiting the node, you're going to use your Steam, your Tabora, your Ferris. Your Tabora is going to go first. It's going to trade Disable, and then your Steam's going to go, and you're going to win, and you're going to move on to the next node. Perfect way to beat the nodes that you've trapped, baited already, um, that have uh, stuff that you can't remove. Uh, assuming that you do rank your Ferris up, event like my Ferris is rank 150, so there are nodes where like I go against uh, a Miserus who has the anticipation, uh, or I go against you know something that has damage mirror. You can just purr it, and he puts a shield on your Mega taunt and now every time you go hardy smacks your mega taunt does does no damage or every time you go the damage mirror hits your mega taunt it does no damage or you're going to go up against anticipation anticipation is something that you cannot just go in with steam and not have an answer to it you either need to use your ferris to go first to shield your mega taunt or you need to use tabora to go first to trade disable the anticipation or you need your ferris to go first and purr away the sc anticipation so there I've covered everything I think you need to know about the steam combo uh, and that is what I'm that's my method that I'm using in the gauntlet. I did beat the brand new gauntlet the very first day that it came out. I did spend gems but only 10 of those gems would have been gems that I should have spent. The other 60 were from nonsense like I just spent gems and I go in and got altered. Um, and I only spent the gems because I didn't level my staff before going in there meaning if we leveled our staff we wouldn't even have to spend 60 gems. It's just a super misplay that caused me 60 gems brain fart, okay? Meaning I still would have beat that gauntlet for only 10 gems, and it would have been possible to beat that gauntlet with no gems at all had I had better trap monsters, okay? Uh, so now let me go in and show you some uh, some of this in action. It's taken 30 minutes to just explain, so uh, I will put a timestamp so that if you want to see the hands-on methods instead of just hearing me go over the information that you need to know, uh, Let's cover in a simplified version what information that I tell you that you needed to know. A, I told you that the Steam Wrath combo is the best clear method in the game at the moment, okay? Uh, B, I told you that trap monsters are the best uh, bait monsters in the game at the moment, okay? So what I'm telling you now is if you're wondering what you should be saving your dust for, what you should be rank uh, ranking up, you should be ranking up your Steam combo. Uh, ranking up your steam combo could mean ranking your linworm first. It could mean ranking your lupo first because you're turn transferring to steam because you've drained the whole entire node and everybody's out of stamina. So you wear some strength, you turn transfer, you beat the node and you move on. Your trap monsters. Hopefully you've been following my channel and you know that you should be ranking your books to rank 2 with your stardust and you have been doing that like I have and you have tons of high level runes now and you have tons of rank 2 monsters. Alright, you're going to need 6s, 7s, and 8s, and 9s life runes on those monsters. I would suggest that if you're ranking one of those monsters to 3, that it wears 8s or 9s. If you're leaving it rank 2, it wears 6s and 7s. You will be able to use the rank 2, 6s, and 7s all the way up to node 52 
52. After node 52, you will start using your rank 3s, 4, and 5 monsters as bait. Yes, I said it. Your rank 5 monsters will become bait. I can't tell you how awesome it is to use Vampyra as bait. She can wear one trap and remove half of their stamina. If I send my PvP monster in from last season, Letal is wearing a trap in all life runes. He's level 140. He takes a hit. They're all half drained. I exit the fight. I send the next monster in. The next monster is Vampyra. Vampyra takes a hit. They're all now all the way drained. This is any node in the... This could be node 56. Then I go in with the steam rat. Then I clear them. Okay? So I've given you the advice on what you need to save for, in my opinion. You need to work on your trap bait monsters. I don't, I'm not sitting here telling you, look, that means you need to overinvest in Henrif. That means you need to overinvest in Rotten. I'm telling you right now that Rotten can still only get you 30 dust a node. So can two any other monsters wearing trap relics. You just send them in at the same time to get hit by an AoE. If you're sending Rotten in, most likely you're sending Rotten in to get hit by an AoE anyway. If you're sending Rotten in with two throwaways, you're expecting an AoE, Rotten's relics trigger, the node's been drained, you exit, okay? The real thing that everybody needs to learn today is how do we put these knowledge to use, and that's what we're gonna go do right now. Alright, so I previously showed you in the beginning of the video, I am stuck on node 47. Uh, I'm going to completely show you why I'm stuck on node 47. Alright, let's go uh, try to be faster than them. Let's try to do the outspeed method. Had I had the Rune Guardian on, I would definitely be able to outspeed them. Uh, I am a free-to-play player, which means I cannot afford to run the Rune Guardian 24-7 every day of the a week. It costs 44 gems to reset uh, your Rune Guardian after it's been used, roughly. Um, to me, I, I can't afford it. So we're going to have to go in. Uh, we're trying to use less gems, not more gems. Um, I understand that a lot of people will make reasons why they use gems. I'm getting information. I'm getting this. That's why I went ahead and I spent gems to beat the gauntlet the first day so that I could get that out of the way. Now I can go ahead and try to beat the gauntlet without spending gems. That's the mission I'm on. All right, so normally I would use the strength rune on Steam to speed up how fast I can kill them. Um, but since we know that we can't get that fast, we're just going to see... I, I want to show you guys exactly what it's like for me when I don't have the Rune Guardian on. And it's going to be way worse for most of you guys because these are with 150s. All three of my monsters are 150, okay? And we are on node 47. Before, in the old gauntlet, you could outspeed every node with 150s. Not anymore. Let's look. My Linworm is 28.4, meaning any monster faster than 28.4 is trouble. Look at that. 28.6. We're not faster than him. Look at that. We're faster than him. Okay, so what that's telling me right now is if I can at least bait this monster, I could then go with this team and turn transfer to her and beat them to death. Okay, so now the problem that I have here is a lot of people would look and they would go like, oh yeah, well, you can bait both of those monsters really easily with trap. Exactly. I'm trying to use the minimum amount of resources here. So the minimum amount of bait possible is to just bait this guy and ignore that guy. Let him keep his stuff. Sure, if I bait them both using like Uriel throwaways or using a monster that's got, you know, 150 with a pump seed staff one that can take a hit from him and a hit from him and drain them both. Yeah, but then I could come in with strength runes on her. Then I could come in with a less reduced speed team. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in make, stretching out all of my bait as far as I can in the gauntlet, which means now I'm looking at elements. This is the target. This is the guy we're trying to bait, okay? He's 28k speed. He is an earth monster, which means I want to use the least valuable bait monster possible, which we discussed, which was a single bait monster. And then I want to use a single bait monster that is also earth. If possible, if I don't have an earth monster that's a single bait monster, then so what? And we're going to use two throwaway monsters. What I always recommend doing is putting your monster that you're using as your bait, your, your weapon, in the middle monster slot where Ferris is, and you put your throwaways on the left and right. Now, the reason why you're sending in throwaways is because the game forces you to use three monsters. You can't just send in one monster here. If I could just send in one monster here, I would. Trust me, guys, I would. So the first thing I do is I go through and I find, you know, what monsters am I using as throwaway? Technically, you should be going and finding your lowest throwaways first. Uh, like, I'm going to come and I'm going to grab this fire star. All right, now we're looking for the official bait monster. I'm looking for a single monster, and I'm looking for one that is an earth. This guy is a single bait monster, but he's one of my best single bait monsters because he can he has uh, damage protection. So I don't want to use him here this early. Um, the next, let me see, 
scrolling down usually okay right here is perfect this guy is an earth monster and he is a single bait monster and i honestly don't even know if i've ever really got to use this guy as bait i think i always get to use him as throwaway so the first thing we're going to do on a single bait monster is you want to make sure you got enough hp to take the hit you want to get a notebook out because you want to know how much bait life you need meaning when when i go into this note i don't know how much damage this guy's gonna do you know why i don't know how much damage this guy's gonna do because the gauntlet is brand new and this is the first time i've ever had to bait note 47 with this guy on it so after baiting this guy i'm now going to have in my notebook a piece of information that says hey look this guy can take this much damage this guy can do this much damage and that information is going to be key you're going to have yourself a nice little sheet that says look i need a bait monster that's got 300k health uh and his earth and you're going to go right in and you're going to smash these nodes uh accomplishing your mission of master baiting i'm going to look for cheapest relics i can to move it's extremely expensive if you have to keep moving your relics that's why the the more knowledgeable you come with bait the the cheaper it gets to bait all right so i now i have my bait team set up all right, since we only want to bait the guy in the front, you would normally just click go. You would click fight. All right, I'm just going to let him fight. First guy's going to hit me. He's going to get drained. Then the next guy's going to go and he's going to kill me. If you're lucky, what if some crazy stuff happens like they don't kill you? I'm 100% sure that Metal Beat will kill me. I've never seen Metal Beat not do a killing move. But just to be better practiced and better trained for all of the nodes where that's not going to work i'm going to show you exactly how you do this all right the previous node which was node 46 i was running at full speed four times speed that means if i click fight right now it's going to be at full time speed and everything is going to be super fast if you look up in the top right corner you see an x button and you see a question mark those two buttons will disappear after clicking the fight button but it will not be immediately it will take a slow pause and then boom it's gone okay if you're on full time speed the amount of time that x button is there starts to feel way smaller because as soon as you click it your relics are going to trigger real fast because you got attacked and the next monster is going everything's going to happen at four times the speed when you want to bait you want everything as slow as possible so if you're not running the gauntlet on slow speed and you're running it on four speed then you automatically know that you only need to click your speed button one time to get back to slow speed meaning i know right now that if i click my slow speed button which isn't there yet it doesn't even show up till you start the fight but if i click that speed button it will slow down of one speed all right well the first thing that I'm going to need to do when I click fight is I'm going to need to click that speed button. Then immediately after clicking that speed button, I'm going to have to click that X button. Because if I don't click that X button in time, I will have to watch it play out and just hope that my bait worked. And I don't like watching things play out and hoping my bait works. I really don't even care what happens in the, in the node. When you get hit, your relics are going to trigger. They will show up at the bottom of the screen, okay? The reason why we put our bait monster in the middle is so that he is now down here at the bottom of the lineup uh, chilling right here why because when you hit the X button a window is going to pop up asking you if you're really really sure you want to exit and that window is going to block the fight it's going to block a lot of what happens and that's why our monster is down there so now that you know what we're gonna do let me show you us doing it alright guys so I've slowed it down just so I could explain what's gonna happen first you click fight then you click this speed button one time, then you click the X button. Now when this screen shows up, you watch the very bottom of the screen, your relics will trigger down there. Uh, you can see the Thetis armor triggers, then it'll disappear, and the next relic will trigger. You see the exhausting mass trigger. As soon as your second relic disappears, you can exit the fight. You can exit the fight right now. I managed to stay in there just because I wanted to see what this other guy was going to do. But you will leave as soon as you see that second relic trigger disappear. Okay, now the reason why we put the monster in the middle was so that you would be able to see your monster while that was all taking place. Now the part that you have to practice and the part that you have to get down is the ability to remember to click the X button and the ability to remember to wait to see both of your relics trigger uh, or whatever relics you are using to bait, you wait to see it trigger before you actually exit. Now this guy is going to go and charge, and then this guy we are faster than, if you remember correctly, see? And then we're going to beat them to death, so let me show you. 
We're back on slow speed. You can turn it back to four, but you're just going to have to remember every time that you want to bait that that's what you do. The reason, another reason why I've been trying to explain how OP steam is, is if you remember in the past when dealing with a megaton node, you had to switch up. That may be the node where you had to switch your main team, you had to bring, you know, some Kodama, or you had to bring Vampyra. You don't have to do anything different with Steam. You just smash out the Megaton, and then you smash everyone else out. So you turn Transfer to Steam, and then you work on the Megaton. If you don't have the steam combo, you would have had to have bait one, most likely, because your tank would have been able to take the other one's hit, and then you could have come in with your whatever team you normally would use to take on a Mega Taunt node. Assuming that you're using a different team strategy, you may have different bait requirements, meaning maybe you can't get your other team strategy to be 28,000 speed, so that may make you have to bait more monsters. That's why I consider Steam Wrath to be the best. It's the fastest. It's reducing the number of baits I need big time compared to the other teams. It makes alts impossible. A monster cannot alt you on the first turn. Uh, and if you're killing them before they get their first turn or killing them before they get their second turn, then it is not possible to be alted at all. And that there is how you successfully single bait a node. I would normally think you have to bait both of these monsters because I have no way at all of ever getting my team over 32,800 speed. I can get over 15, but not these two. All right. Well, the principles that I told you on a successful gauntlet run is to use the least valuable bait first and then basically make your try to get the least worthless monsters used first. Uh, so looking at this, you go, oh, okay, I got to bait both monsters. It is resource bait, it's bait resource cheaper to only have to bait one of them. If I can reduce this uh, node cost down from a two bait to a, one, a single bait, then I've overall increased my chances of going even deeper today, which means I'm looking at it as this monster goes first, this monster goes second. If I bait this monster, this monster should not kill my Megaton. He will hit my Megaton, but he won't kill it. We are only on node 48. If he doesn't kill my Megaton, and he doesn't take my Megaton below 150k, I can just rune heal back whatever this monster does. Okay, so that is the best way I can explain using the this strat, and I will be back as soon as we've set it up for that using a single bait. All right, so that I've got, my, I've now got my baits set up to uh, bait this node. The reason why I chose my baits the way I did is that Witch Cat is just a throwaway, someone who's going to die uh, for absolutely no value. I had to use a placeholder. Uh, I would have had to use multiple placeholders. These two are single bait monsters, but I personally don't own a mask or an armor that deals uh, enough stamina drain to only be able to use one. So I have split the stamina draining cost between two monsters so that if I get hit with an AoE, it should drain them both. Now this guy is nature and this guy is fire, so there's a chance that we could get hit with the weakness and it could kill my guy, but I don't think it's going to with 400k health on node 48, but I could be wrong, we will find out. Uh, I just told you guys you have to hit the X button, but you also have to hit the speed button first because if you just remember on the previous Note 47, I was running at full speed, so I have to do the full on fight, speed, X, watch. I can now see the two monsters that needed to get hit. They both get hit. Look at the bottom of the screen. Wait for the relic triggers. As soon as you see the second one disappear, that is when you click the button. All right, now that the first monster is going to charge, then this guy is going to go. He's going to hit our Megaton, not deal enough damage to kill our Megaton. We are then going to beat them all three to death with Steam Wrath, and then we are going to rune heal our bomb for the next node. I turn the speed back up. So I have 730k was not enough. So that was if I have learned to put down in my notebook that Bombetta cannot take that hit on 48.
at least not my bed, or at least not my bomb bed up. And then we just finish out the node. So this has become a, I would have to double bait here, or should have had to, and I didn't. All right, so I am going to gem my bomb as a brain farted mistake that I basically paid 10, 10 gems for information in my notebook. The information I now have in my notebook is Note 48, Krampus, level 220, 26,841 strength, can do 264k damage AOE, which kills my bomb. Duly noted now in my book. But before paying those 10, I'm gonna go into the next node why? To see if I need to bait this node. If I need to bait this node, which obviously I need to bait this node, we've got two monsters going. Um, I now only need to use one throwaway along with the bait holder. I think this is going to be the first double bait node. I don't want to risk her putting up evade and us having to use a purr before we could hit the monsters. Um, so we're going to try and bait both Chimney and the Dreamer. All right, so to reduce myself from using a bunch of throwaways, I've got two options on how I can try to bait this node. I can send in these two super low level trap monsters because they're most likely not going to be able to bait later nodes due to low health and try to bait the node that way. Or I can send in one really high health uh, single bait monster and let it get hit twice. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with this. Uh, in the future, I will rank both Chimney and the Slug, and we will be able to use this on a much later node instead of as early as we are. Now, hopefully it works. We know we are on full speed, so I have to hit the Speed button. Then I have to hit the X button. I can only see one of them, so I really got to hope... All right, we only got one trigger. He single attacked instead of AOE. Let me go in there and see what I'm left with. All right, so I've basically baited the node, in my opinion. Uh, the worst thing that could happen is Dreamer cast something. So... We're going to get the bomb back from our misplay, and then we're going to change in our team. All right, so now I've changed my speed order to where Tabura goes first, Ferris goes second, and Steam goes last, just in case there's enough stamina there and Dreamer casts Evade Positive Effects Protects on one of these monsters. My Tabura will remove the Protect Effects, and then my uh, Ferris can go and remove the Evade. Turn our speed back up. She did not have enough stamina to do anything. So we just go ahead and play the node out. All right, so that is my first successful baiting of two monsters in this gauntlet, but it was a sloppy... Uh, version of how to do so since our one monster didn't even get hit so I will come back to doing uh, actually right here is perfect we absolutely have to bait both of these monsters I have no way of beating this node without baiting these two monsters all right so the monster that I'm going to use to bait this node is my Henrich because he only has 370k HP he doesn't get a damage protection like Rotten and he's going to occupy the same uh, space as two trap holders I do have uh, two other trap holders like I could use um, Oros uh, and Dreamer for say but the chances are higher that one of those could get single hitted uh, and the node would botch. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get my Henrich out of the way because we do got an electric monster here, which means there's a good chance that uh, the electric monster could single one uh, and then Krampus kill him, uh, do an AoE, or the electric monster could hit Henrich and then Krampus do an AoE. So this is the setup that I'm going to use. Got to remember to do the speed like I told you guys. Speed, X, wait, and watch. 
All right, so she goes, did not do enough damage to trigger the relics. He goes and did all the damage to one monster. So this was a horrible mate. All right, so to retry, I am going to use two trap monsters. Uh, assuming that this doesn't work either, I have brought a Uriel Essence so that I can switch and go into using uh, Uriel Essence um, strategy of just, the, which is what we call a Uriel Throwaway, which is where it will take a turn from each of them to kill our Uriel monster, and we will just drain them from stamina that way. But I always prefer to be able to use uh, the trap monsters. Uh, you can do a mix combined of using the trap and the Uriel, assuming that you can use your Uriel throwaways to get them to about half stamina. Then you can send in one trap monster and drain them that way. So this is the attempt that I'm gonna make. We've already slowed the speed down, so I just have to hit the X button this time. I should have put my other trap monster up top where I could see what was going on. Uh, it looks like he took a single hit. Um, yeah, so we've got a Nab's Trap trigger, uh, and now we've got everybody's dead. I'm going to leave because the Uriel was going to let uh, a monster go that I'm not sure on its stamina because it looked like it took two moves plus got hit with the Nab's Trap. Yeah, so they're, they're both extremely low now, which means all I should have to do here is throw in one Uriel monster to find out what's going on. So we've got our level 35 Uriel monster throw away. It's going to go in and see uh, they're either going to charge or they're going to do a move. Um, I don't really trust uh, their staminas. If they charge, we could send in a trap monster to reduce all of that. But uh, yeah, I really just, I can't risk it. I don't know what they do. So we'll look at their staminas. Yeah, the guy's got 37. So we really got to hope that he's got a move that does 37. And he did. So it was a perfect call to do what we did. Uh, and just like that, we have now baited the node the way we wanted it baited. We can bring in our steam team. But again, if you're a master baiter, you will do this all in one bait attempt. Whereas we used three trap monsters, four trap slots total since Henrich could wear two traps. So I went down four traps, one Uriel. Two Uriels since uh, the one trap monster could wear a Uriel. So if you can see, I've wasted way more resources on this node than I should have been wasting on this node. And that's where I myself, along with you guys, have the rest of our time doing the gauntlet to get better at doing what works. All right, now once I have drained a node, uh, this is the team that I like to use because it allows me to wear strength on my steam. And then my steam basically has 24k speed because we're going to turn transfer. You just have to watch. Watch out for anticipations when doing this. I turn my speed back up. Another method of baiting that I quickly want to go over. Uh, before I forget while I was doing it off camera is Uriel baiting. When you need to bait just two monsters uh, and you're not using your traps, you can use a Uriel monster. You wear one Uriel essence. Uh, the first monster will hit you, kill you. The second monster will kill you again. Uh, and you will drain them both. Uh, this node is definitely worth noting if you're a Steam Wrath user. This guy has damage mirror, so you will need to either shield a tank or you will need to purr that away. Uh, and this monster has zero cooldown moves. Uh, I'm I mean, this month, and this monster has zero stamina moves, uh, but the problem is first you got to get it to zero stamina moves before it'll use its zero stamina move, and its zero stamina move is to purr and single attack, so you can either come, uh, assuming this guy wasn't here, uh, or even that he is, 
being that I have a max Steam Wrath, I can purr away his damage, uh, Mir. But if you didn't have that, you'd have to do something else. But I could easily bring a Taunt level 4. Light Mirror will use its zero stamina attack, killing the Taunt monster. And then I will use my Steam to purr away the damage Mirror. And I will, er, I will use my Ferris to purr away the damage Mirror. And then my Steam to beat them to death. That's the game plan that I've got going on here. But first, I've got to get the two monsters out of stamina. So what I've been doing is bringing Uriel monsters that are expected to die... Uh, since he didn't die, he's going to allow me to trigger stamina sooner, which is what I was hoping for. Uh, and now we should be either at the zero stamina move. Yeah, that's the zero stamina move. So. Uh, I can send in... A Uriel monster again, or I can send in a trap monster to try and take a single hit and drain the second monster that way. Um, I think at this point, I probably want to save my Uriel monsters if I have any left, which most of the ones I have left wear stuff. So I'm thinking that uh, maybe sending in like this trap monster is probably my best bet. Um, cause my other trap or my other Uriel monster would be this monster. So I really think we just send this guy in, he gets hit and drains. All right. So the worst thing that can happen here is we don't take enough damage from a single hit to trigger a relic and then Aatrox kills us. But even if that happens, it will be the same thing as if we did a Uriel monster here. We are just trying to bait Aatrox at this point. Uh, I'm not hitting the X button because I'm an idiot. So that's what happens. That's what a failed bait looks like when you don't hit the exit button, guys. All right, so now what could have been a perfect bait uh, turned into a waste of a trap monster. I now need to drain the Aatrox more difficultly, wasting more baits, and most likely will not finish the gauntlet due to misplays, but I'm hoping that you're getting the concept of hitting the X button, and you've seen what happens when you don't hit the X button, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, so let's make sure we hit it this time, even though it doesn't really matter. When you can't see anything, you just watch the bottom of the screen. I've got an exhausting match trigger on a monster that had no stamina, so it's not really going to matter. Uh, and my monster died. Uriel Essence comes back, and we're going to die again. So we only got to take one off of Aatrox, who is probably at like 110 stamina now. Uh, and now, uh, since I don't have any Uriel monsters left other than really good ones, I am going to try to send in a super high HP monster with a single... A relic on hoping to be able to eat a hit from both of them and if it doesn't eat the second hit it will have worked just as a Uriel Essence monster would have worked so I'm still going to hit the X just because I don't want to mess up what I've been doing but he's at 90 stamina uh, and now he's drained as you can see the 40 popped off of them. And we have successfully baited two nodes that we wasted lots of bait on, which I'm sure most of you watching are familiar with how to waste baits. The concept of the video is to show you how not to waste baits. Uh, since we know that the one monster is going to go with a zero stamina move, we have to come with some sort of answer to that zero stamina move. I do not think the monster is going to hit hard enough to kill my bomb in one hit. It will purr away the mega taunt though. This is where having a ranked Ferris helps me. I put on speed uh, and then I go first and I purr away the damage mirror that is on Brute.
All right, so now my turn order is Ferris going first, Steam going second, and the only thing that I need to pay attention to is Steam has to be at least twice as fa or at least faster than half the speed. You take the monster, you divide it by two, and Steam needs to be faster than that. My bomb will go and eat that zero stamina move, then Ferris will go and purr away the damage mirror, and then Steam will beat them to death. Right, guys so i figured i would just show you the end result of how far i got uh, i sacrificed my bomb on 53 because i was only able to bait two of the monsters um i failed so many times on 53 i lost like probably 12 plus monsters there uh 54 everybody is 37k plus speed so this is a node where you either need a one monster wearing two traps, or B, you need uh, two monsters wearing a trap to be able to bait this node, um, and they're going to have to have a substantially high amount of HP. Um, the reason why I'm not going to go ahead and try to bait it is because these are the only monsters I have left. Uh, say I send in uh, Vampira and I send in Manny to bait it, uh, only one of them or that's only going to bait half of the node, meaning they're all going to be at half stamina, and then I'd only have three monsters left, and I'd send my team in, and I would get killed. Uh, so this is as far as I got today. Um, really, it's basically just due to the fact that after, like, node 51, you need to trap bait every single node today uh, if you don't own a Shelly. Um, if you own a Shelly, then you only need to bait two of the monsters, uh, or if you're a triple Uriel team, you can bait two of the monsters, but uh, my triple Uriel team ended up dying uh, on 52, I think it was. I think it was whichever one the Necromancer node was, or one of those nodes. I ended up using my triple Uriel team basically just to die, trying to stamina drain, and it didn't work, and then I sent in my bomb team and sacked my bomb, so I think it was 53. Uh, and then 54, we ended up sacking Bomb again after baiting. So 20 gems, only got that far. Uh, and they were all from just being super stupid and wasting my bait, guys. Uh, which I'm sure many of you are aware of wasting bait. And that's why uh, I made this video in the first place, was to try and help everybody uh, be better at the bait. So to end this video, I'm going to say that... Uh, I did take advantage of this offer here. I bought Shelly for 1,400 gems. Um, Shelly is now in the ranker ranking for rank 1, and then I will use my remaining dust to rank 3. Cryo Crawler and Shelly, and that should give me a huge boost in this gauntlet. Uh, a lot of you who aren't going to have the luxury of getting Shelly, you're really going to have to work on your trap monsters, guys. I can't stress it enough. There are four monsters coming this era that all wear traps. You need to get all of them. You need to level them up. You need to get them at least rank 2. Rank 2 can get you to node 52. So I really highly cannot stress enough how important trap monsters are. Um, so basically... This video has been rough and it's been awkward and I tried to get it done during Christmas time. Uh, I am doing this um, maze. I need just like 30 more cells I think to finish the maze. Uh, so if I get to the 11 and then I think I need to make it to that 20 and I'm done. But I'm going to be aiming for the 25 uh, Christmas coins as well. Uh, so anyway guys. Thanks to everyone who has been watching my channel. Uh, if you have any questions, there's a link to my Discord in the description. You can come there and ask, and I am more than happy to give you advice on the gauntlet. Um, 
So yeah, guys, uh, I hope this video helps you become master baiters. Um, I myself am still working on becoming a better baiter, but I at least shared with you the principles of hitting the X button and the principles of the value of the uh, bait monsters and knowing what to use. And again, uh, the reason why I wasn't successful today at beating the gauntlet is because I used too much substantial good bait too early, meaning when you fail to bait a node, that is extremely crucial because you're going to have to use a second set of baits that could have been used on another node. So sometimes failing the bait can cost you a whole 30 dust later because you're going to have to use the monsters that you would have used to make that 30 dust later to bait the one you just failed. So that's what you're really trying to get better at avoiding. Uh, I missed one with an X button. Uh, I missed one by judging damage. Like You're going to fail a bunch of times, but it's giving us all a goal on what to work towards if you want to be this dungeon without spending gems so until the next video i'll see you later